How would you describe a ninja? Uh, I don't know. Probably black hood, black robes, samurai sword, something like that. Oh yeah, cool, cool. What if I told you you were completely wrong and that was completely stupid? Well, I'd feel like a dumbass. Well, you sure look like one, but don't worry. In this video, I'm going to explain and debunk some very common historical misconceptions. So like I was just explaining to my friend, the way that we commonly imagine ninjas is almost completely inaccurate to the way that they actually looked. Ninjas looked nothing like that, and there was no such thing as a ninja uniform at all. Ninjas typically wore civilian clothing to blend in with everyone else. If you think about it, it makes sense to look like everyone else so they wouldn't draw attention to themselves. Walking around in an all black hooded outfit with a sword on your back would probably cause some suspicion. Even during nighttime operations, ninjas would wear navy blue, not black. One, to hide the stains of blood better. Two, because the navy blue would actually blend into the night sky better than black would. Ninjas were spies, assassins, covert agents, and their ultimate goal and specialty was to hide in plain sight. So the next time a kid comes to your door on Halloween dressed up as a historically inaccurate ninja, make sure you let him know that, hey, you don't look like a ninja, you look like a dummy. And you're not getting any candy, pajama kid. The next misconception is that people only lived to be like 30 in the Middle Ages. That's not true at all. It is an accurate statement to say the life expectancy was shorter in the Middle Ages. However, not nearly as much shorter as you may think. For example, a fully grown, healthy 21-year-old man in medieval times could be expected to live all the way to the age of 64, which isn't necessarily super old, but definitely not, you know, dying in your 30s or 40s. The largest reason for this misconception and common discrepancy is the fact that infant mortality in the Middle Ages was just so high, which is a problem we almost don't have anymore. With modern medicine and technological advances, the infant mortality rate, fortunately, is extremely low nowadays. But in the medieval times, if 50% of people are dying before they hit one year old, obviously the average life expectancy is going to be lower overall. Our third misconception that I personally remember hearing vividly as a child was that if you drop a penny off the Empire State Building and it lands on someone, it will kill them. This is completely false. Without getting too much into detail, let's just go over some simple numbers. For starters, a penny itself only weighs 2.5 grams. With the height that the penny would fall from the Empire State Building, it would have the opportunity to achieve terminal velocity. However, adjusting for wind resistance and air friction would only allow this to really reach anywhere from 30 to 100 miles per hour. Which you might be thinking, 100 miles per hour? Damn, that's going to kill me. Well, no, because you have to think about the energy expenditure once it impacts. It takes roughly 68 joules of power to be able to fracture a human skull. That means anything with a force higher than 68 joules has a high probability of killing you if it impacts with your skull. Now, for context, a raindrop with its tiny mass at terminal velocity will only have 0.002 joules of kinetic energy. And a penny at terminal velocity will only have about 0.2 joules. So, although you may have heard, and it may seem, that a metal object at terminal velocity could easily kill you, that's simply not the case, at least with a penny. So the next time you're up in a high building, throw all the change you can over the edge. It's completely safe, it's fun, and nobody will get mad at you. And if someone does get mad, just do what that really annoying kid in school would do. Just say, It's a free country. It's a free country. I can do what I want. It's a free country. Nobody thinks that's annoying. It's honestly great. Number four. Benjamin Franklin did not invent or discover electricity. At some point, you probably heard the story of Benjamin Franklin tying a key to a kite and going out in a thunderstorm. Now, this story alone is already debated on when or if it ever even happened, but that's not what I'm focusing on. My focus is on the claim that Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity. Right off the bat, one thing to make very clear is that nobody invented electricity. It seems pretty obvious, but just to clear the air, electricity is a natural force that exists in this world. Therefore, it is not invented, it is simply discovered. A bit of a nitpick, but worth mentioning. Now, to give credit where credit is due, Benjamin Franklin had one of the greatest scientific minds of his time. He was interested in many areas of science, made many discoveries, and even invented many things, including bifocal glasses. But he was not the first to discover electricity. Egyptian scholars wrote in texts in 2750 BC referring to electric fish, known as the thunders of the Nile, and several Mediterranean cultures were aware of static electricity. The first proper electric study was conducted in the 1600s by English scientist William Gilbert, who actually coined the term electricity. Benjamin Franklin had numerous contributions in the field of electricity, notably demonstrating the electric nature of lightning with his key experiment, but he was not the first to discover it. This next one honestly blows my mind. People still believe that WWE is fake when it's obviously real. Like just look at John Cena, he's real. 
He's as real as it gets. What do you think he's been doing for the last 20 years? Just faking it? Just doing nothing? Why do you think Fred would have John Cena in his movie if he was just a big phony? This is just complete lunacy. And even though it's modern history, it's still history and it's still real. Okay. Have you seen this painting? This is American Gothic by Grant Wood. And if you look at it, what do you see? A man, a woman, a pitchfork, a house, a barn? Now, if you're like most people, you probably assumed, oh, this is a husband and wife. Well, actually, no. This is a daughter and father. So now you just look creepy. Completely off topic, but just kind of interesting was how this painting even came to be in the first place. The only reason this painting exists is because Grant Wood, the original painter of the painting, saw this house that he was so inspired by that he said, I want to paint the people that probably would have lived here. And the people that modeled for the painting aren't even related. The woman in the painting is Grant's sister, and the man is their family dentist, which is so funny, but kind of interesting. Okay, so this next one makes a lot of sense, but I've just never thought about it. Ancient Greek and Roman sculptures were actually originally painted with color. They only appear white today because the original pigments have just deteriorated. There are some well-preserved statues that still have traces of their original color, but it is extremely rare. Think about it. Your 2006 Honda Civic has paint falling off. You think the pigments of 2000 years ago are going to last forever? No. Speaking of things you can't see anymore, Helen Keller was famous for being a great speaker because of her limitations, right? If you do some research on her, or maybe if you just have some peripheral knowledge, that's probably what you understand. But actually, Helen was a great proponent of socialism and communism. She spoke mostly on workers and women's rights, and she advocated for an American communist government. I just find this misconception quite interesting because a lot of information about Helen Keller has nothing to do with this, but this is the primary reason why she gained public popularity. Obviously, her story is motivational, and she was very well-spoken for someone in her situation, but the majority of her initial content was all about communism, which is just so interesting that that's not talked about. Whether you support or don't support communism, I feel like this is just interesting that this fact is just left out. And she's just seen as, oh yeah, she was a great motivational speaker. Well, what did she talk about? And ladies and gentlemen, the last thing that I want to talk about is not communism. It is our last historical misconception. This misconception is that chastity belts were a medieval thing. Chastity belts were not a medieval thing at all. They didn't even exist back then. Also, a lot of medieval chastity belts that have been found are either complete fakes or anti-masturbation devices from the 19th to 20th century, when there's a widespread belief that masturbation could lead to insanity. In 1878, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, yes, that Kellogg, the creator of cornflakes, he was an advocate for complete abstinence of all kinds. There is literally a quote from John Kellogg that goes as follows, Neither the plague, nor war, nor smallpox, nor similar diseases have produced results so disastrous to humanity as the habit of masturbation. All I'm saying is I think Johnny Boy should stick to cereal. And with that being said, I would love to hear from you guys. How many of these misconceptions have you heard of? And how many of these did you actually believe before watching this video? Let me know in the comments. And also, if there's any misconceptions that you know the truth about, leave them in the comments below. And who knows, maybe I'll make a part two. This is my fourth video and we're dropping brand new videos every single week. So if you enjoy, subscribe. We've got a lot more awesome videos coming up very soon. Trust me, bro.